We have one more topic this week that I wanted to spend a few minutes talking about, and that is how to take your React app and uh, prepare it for production, because so far we've only been doing development. And how do we package it up, deploy it? Where do we deploy it? What are some different options? So there's a, a couple of things here in the notes, and I'm going to add some more to it as well. And we'll do some similar things when we look at uh, working with Angular and how to deploy uh, things with Angular. So just off the top, I would encourage you to take a look at the Create React App uh, deployment documentation, which is excellent. And it tells you how to um, how to basically how to do this. So let's just start from the top. So the the thing that you need in order to build your code is you have to do npm run build. So let's just do that. So I have this React app here that we built for playing with the um, the Art API earlier and working with forms. And I'd like to package it up and ship it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, build this thing. So if, from the root of my project, if you look at the package.json file, let me just switch my view here. If you look at the package.json file, you'll see that there's a number of scripts that are all defined for us. So we've been using the start script, but now we're going to work on uh, using the build script. So I'm going to say npm run build. And it's going to create an optimized production build. And you'll, you'll see that I have a new folder here that's being created called build. So what it's going to do is it's going to go through and package up all my code and it's going to create the bundle and optimize the code. So it'll do things like minifying the JavaScript and it will remove any code that I've included that I'm not using. So if there's a module that I'm not using, it, it can just remove that. It's called tree shaking. So it's got a bunch of optimizations that it can make to try and make this thing as small as possible. And when it's done, so you can see here, this thing is now finished. So it, basically what I have is I have an index.html file. You can see that it doesn't look very nice. It's just this, uh, you know, it's all, all the spaces have been removed. It's not optimized for debugging. It's optimized for developing. Sorry, the other way around. <laughs> it's not optimized for developing. It's optimized for production. And you can see that it's broken up my code into a bunch of different chunks. So I have like a main chunk and then I have other pieces of the app that can be loaded. And so if you look, you'll see that I have static inside here. I have all my JavaScript has been put into these files. So like my main chunk is, um, you know, here, all these pieces. So like, you know, pieces of my code that are all here. And you can see the same thing for the CSS. The CSS has all been put together, like the bootstrap uh, CSS is in here and the CSS that I wrote, all of it has been put together and it's also written source maps. So the source maps allow when you're debugging production code like this to be able to go back to the way that it was before in, you know, when it had uh, proper variable names and line numbers. You can even see that it's smart enough to do things like package up the image that I'm using in the, um, in the top section of my page. And so I have my whole page uh, put together. So this is fantastic. So this is the build directory. So if I wanted to work with this, it says, okay, what you need to do now is you need to take what's inside build and you need to host it. So just to show you what that would look like, it says, if you want to use serve, you can use serve. And you'll see in the documentation, it says, if you want, you can install serve and you can run serve. So I'll show you what that would look like. So if I go into the build directory, I'm going to run serve with MPX. So I'll say MPX serve. And what it'll do is it'll download the serve uh, web server. It's just a little tiny static web server. And it will tell it to uh, serve out this directory. And basically what I've done is I have detached my React app from having any kind of a web server. So React doesn't care how it's run, like it could be run by lots of different web servers. It's not dependent upon a specific one. We had a development web server when we were first um, running this just to make it easier to do our work, but we don't actually need to rely on that web server. It's not like a fast web server that's built for 
um, shipping to production. So that's what we want to talk about now. Like, how do I actually put this thing into production? And my network is being ridiculously slow here trying to download this. Let me try a different one. Uh, there. Okay, so let's look at this. So this is now running on port 8080. Localhost uh, 8080. And here's my app. So my app has has been bundled and it's been loaded. And you can see that the server, this little web server that I have on my computer is, is working. Okay, so something to note. So by default, uh, when you create your React app, it is going to generate a git ignore file for you. And the git ignore file says to git, these are all the things that I want you to ignore. Like don't put these things in git. So for example, node modules. You almost never put node modules into Git because they're huge and because you don't need them because inside package.json, all of your dependencies are already specified. So if you run npm install, you can get all those again. You don't need to put those into the package. So we don't. So Git ignore has things like don't put in the node modules, but it also has this. It says, don't put the build folder in there. And you'll notice in, I don't know if you can tell, but in my Visual Studio code, this is sort of a gray color, whereas public is a white color. So it's it's there, but it's, it's not gonna be in Git. So you have to be aware of this if you're gonna try and push this to Git, because by default, the build directory will not go to Git. Like if I try and say git add build, uh, it says build did not, oh, I'm in the wrong directory git add build, it says, look, uh, the following paths are ignored. If you want to do this, you're going to have to tell me to force it. Like it won't happen automatically. Okay, so a couple of other notes about um, packaging this up, doing this build step. So there's a few things to be aware of. Let me skip down through some of these things. Okay, the first one is dealing with relative paths. So when you're going to ship this to a server, you may or may not be running it out of the root. Like I'm running out of the root of this server, right? But that's not always where you're gonna be deploying your app. You might be deploying your app inside something slash something slash something, like deep inside of a web server. So if you need to specify the top level path for your app, what you have to do is you have to put that into your package.json. So in package.json, you can say, I want to have a uh, home page is going to be HTTPS uh, myserver.com slash um, project, whatever. It's going to be something like that. You know what I mean? So you can, when you do the build, it will use this as a prefix and um, a lot of this stuff is already set up to do it for you automatically. Like if you look at index.html, you'll see that the public, like the URL that it's it's spe it's specified to use this URL is already defined as a variable. So whatever you do in the package.json, it'll get picked up this way. Um, you can also just put a dot in here if you want it to, um, like if you're serving the same build directory from a different path, if you're not using the HTML5 push state history API or you're not using client side routing. So be aware if you're using the DOM router that we've been talking about, then this isn't going to be a great solution. So you have to be careful with the way you package it up. You have to figure out which of these different systems you're going to be using for, um, for putting it in. Okay, so once you've got this thing built, what can you do with it? Well, you can put the build directory anywhere you want. And so there's a bunch of things I would get you to consider. So one of the things that the notes talk about is you could deploy this thing to Heroku. So if you want to deploy it to Heroku, Heroku is not designed as a CDN. In other words, it's not designed for pushing static websites to be hosted. However, it can, it can run a web server. So if you create a little uh, web server in Express and you tell it that you want to host the basically you want to host a bunch of static files, then this will work. And you'll see the same thing is listed here inside the notes for create react app. You can make a little server and the, and the server is basically just going to serve the build directory. And so if somebody asks for the root, you're just going to give them the index.html page and it'll serve that out. 
So if you want to if you want to serve this stuff using React, you can do that. That is uh, sorry if you want to serve it using Heroku, that is a legitimate way to do it. But it's not what I would do. The reason I don't like using Heroku for this is that Heroku, especially if you're using the free, first of all, Heroku is amazing. But if you're doing this with the free tier, they're going to shut down your app after 30 minutes of inactivity. And then when you go to it again, it's going to have to spin up the web server and then start the web server and then serve your page. So that's not a great experience if all you want to do is put up a website that's just a bunch of static pages, which is what, um, which is the beauty of working with React is that everything that you, uh, you know, you want to work with is just static HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. So, so it doesn't make sense to me to try and put a server in place here. So what I would do is I would use a solution that's designed for hosting static websites. So you've got a bunch of options. So one option is you can use GitHub pages. So this is built right into Git. I mean, everything I'm going to show you here depends on Git. So you need to have your, you need to put your stuff on Git. I have the, um, let me see, artsy. I have this code up on GitHub already. So the code that I have been working on, I already pushed it to, I already pushed it to GitHub. So if I wanted to, I could deploy it to GitHub pages. Another possibility is I could use Netlify. Netlify is a really great solution for building web apps and it can easily connect to GitHub or you can do it without connecting to GitHub if you uh, want to deploy to them. Another one is begin.com, which I really like. Begin.com is neat because it lets you um, put up a static web assets like a React app, but you can also write uh, Lambda functions. So you can write functions that are gonna run basically without a server. So it runs all on top of Amazon Web Services on top of AWS. And it's a really good solution. Another one you can use is Vercel. And Vercel does basically the same idea as what Netlify does to be able to, you know, to allow you to, um, to host this. Okay, so let's, let's think about some options of what we could do. So one thing I could do is I could, I could put this thing on, uh, on a special branch, on a GH Pages branch. So if I wanted to, I could say, I'm gonna, um, let me make my window a bit bigger. I'm gonna make a branch called GH Pages, GitHub Pages. Git checkout dash B GH pages. So now I'm on the GitHub pages branch. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add my build directory. I'm gonna say git add build, and I'm gonna force it to be added. I'm gonna say uh, add git add build dash F. Now, I guess I, I have two ways that I could do this. I could either, I'll just do it this way. I'll keep it simple. So I'm gonna put, I'm gonna add the build directory to my commit and you'll see that I end up with a build directory with all this stuff in here. So here's my built website. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push that to GitHub. So I'm gonna say git push origin gh pages. So it's going to take this branch and it's gonna push it up to uh, git, but it's gonna push it to a different branch than the main branch that it was on before. So let me refresh this and you'll see what I mean. So here we are on GitHub, and I now have two branches. I have a master branch and I have a GH Pages branch. If I go to GH Pages branch, did I not? Oh, you know what I didn't do? Sorry, I didn't add, I didn't commit. So I did git add build dash F, I did that, and I need to commit and say um, adding build directory. So I've committed it, and now I can push git push origin gh pages. Okay, so now if I refresh the gh pages branch, you'll see that I have this build directory and the build directory has my website in it. So this is now sitting up here on, on git. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna modify the settings for this repository. So I'm gonna go into let me just make this window bigger. 
I'm gonna go to settings and I'm gonna scroll down to the GitHub pages section. And you'll see that because I put a branch up called GH pages, it's automatically going to serve this directory for me. And it's going to serve the root directory out of the GitHub pages branch. And you can see that it's telling me what the URL is going to be for this. So here, HTTPS, Humpty, GitHub IO, Web 422, Week 5, Artsy. So this is where it's going to be placed. So let's go over here and take a look at it. So what you're seeing here is you're seeing my readme file. So if you look at the code, it has basically, it's serving the root directory, the readme file here. But what I wanna do is I wanna get the build directory. So if I go here and I say build, and I open this up, now this is what it's loading here, but you notice that it's not, it's not doing what I want. So I got a whole bunch of 404s. So you'll notice that it's trying to load, uh, it's trying to load things out of the wrong directory. Okay, so the files are there, but they're inside the build directory. So if I go here and I try and load this file from here, it's there, but it's just, it's not lined up rightly. And it's because of this over here. So it's because I need to set the home page. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the home page like this. Actually, let's, if you look at the um, GH pages, they tell you, um, how to set this up inside here as well. I'm gonna I'm gonna modify this so that I have the right uh, directory in here. So I'll put the home page in. I'm gonna rebuild my site npm run build. Waiting, waiting, waiting. There, okay, so this is now done. So at this point, I'm gonna add the build folder again. I'm gonna, so these files have changed. I'm going to add the package.json file, git status, and I'm gonna commit and say um, update homepage for build on GH pages, and I'll push to the GH pages branch. This will take a minute to update. So what happens when it goes to build this, you'll push it up to GitHub and it will take some amount of time before it will, um, it'll actually pick up those changes. I'll pause this and wait for it to catch up. Okay, so now it's caught up. The GitHub has refreshed what it has loaded on the site. So now if I load this, you can see that it works here. And if I load cats here, I'm getting um, my app is working just fine. So the only trick I had to do was when I set up the settings for the GitHub repo, I'm telling it, to use the GitHub pages branch. You could also use your master branch if you want. So if you wanted to push your build directory up on the master branch, it's just not normally done. Or if you wanna make the GitHub pages branch just the contents of what's inside your um, build directory, you could do that too. 
And then you can access it via the, you know, your username.github.io slash name of the repo slash build. And, and setting the home page over here allowed that to work. Okay, let's try it another way. So another way I could do it is using Vercel. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to connect this repo that I have on GitHub into Vercel. So I'm logged in on Vercel using my GitHub account. And once you get connected, you know, I'm, I specify my account, my GitHub account, and then it will connect to all my repos. So I'm gonna import this repo and build it on Vercel. So it says, give it a name. What kind of an app is it? And they have lots of different ones, but it, in this case, it's a Create React app. Later on, you'll see they can do Angular and other things in here. What's the root directory? Uh, and the build output, you can specify which command to run, which directory it's going to build to. So what you're seeing here is it has an awareness of how this app is built. So by default, it's gonna do npm run build and it's gonna to go to the build directory and so on. So I'm gonna click on deploy. So what it'll do is it's gonna grab the code from my repo and it's gonna install the dependencies, right? And you can watch it happen here in real time. So basically it's installing all of the um, things like Bootstrap, Bootstrap React, Evergreen, downloads all these packages and does the build for me on their server. So this is different than what happened with GitHub. With GitHub, I had to do the build myself and then I just pushed up the product of the build. What Vercel is gonna do is it's gonna watch your GitHub repo and if you make changes, and you push new changes to that code, it's gonna redo the build, and then it's gonna deploy just the built version of it. So you can see here the, the installation finished, and now it's doing um, the build step. So it's creating the optimized build. So this is exactly what I just had to do on my own machine, but it's happening on their machines, and I don't have to run this. And it's connected live to the work. So you can see that it's going to use the, um, it's gonna use the commit, whatever the current commit is in Git. And <laughs> congratulations, there it is. So if we go to visit this, I go to this website, you'll see that I have my app running here, cats, and it works just great. So it's sitting on top of Vercel. So this is a really slick um, way to do it. You can connect GitHub repos into a service like Vercel, you can do the exact same thing with Netlify or Begin. Like all of these services work the same way. So you, you, know, you have to have code that lives in GitHub, but if the code lives in GitHub, then it's really easy for you to connect it up with, uh, it's easy to connect it up with one of these other services. So give it a try this week when you're uh, when you're doing your work and you push up something to uh, GitHub. Try connecting it up to something like Vercel and or Netlify and deploy that code. Uh, deploy that code to the web. What's great about it is it's really easy to share it with your friends. So instead of having it run on localhost 8000, I now have a H I have a secure HTTPS that I can use, um, I could give this uh, URL to somebody else. And Vercel lets you do things like, um, you know, set up like the domain, if I wanna change the domain, or I can do all sorts of fancy things with it. Everything I've done here so far is free. They have a really generous free tier where you can do this sort of stuff without having to spend anything. I didn't have to put in a credit card or anything. Uh, and these services, they have really generous free tiers to get you started so that you can uh, you can try working on that. Anyway, give it a shot and um, get comfortable deploying your code to different services so that you can show people the cool things that you build. And you know it's really easy for someone to try out a project that you make.